coup in Honduras that saw the ouster of Mel Zelaya. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn to Honduras, where both candidates are claiming victory in the country's disputed presidential election, the race has pitted Xiomara Castro, the wife of ousted President Manuel Zelaya, against right-wing candidate Juan Orlando Hernandez. According to election officials, with more than half the precincts reporting Hernandez has won 34 percent of the vote, Castro 29 percent. Castro's husband, Manuel Zelaya, was ousted in that 2009 coup. She is running on the platform of a new party called Libre, or Free. The campaign's been marred by violent attacks in a country with the highest per capita homicide rate in the world. At least five people were killed near a polling station in the eastern part of the country before voting began Sunday. According to the group Rights Action, at least 18 members of the Libre Party were murdered in the run-up to the election, more than all other political parties combined. On Sunday, De Castro said results prove she was the winner. Right now, the data that we have received, according to the exit polls we've received from the entire country and also the count of information and ballots that we've received today, we can clearly tell you that I am the president of Honduras. The final election results are expected later today, but Castro's supporters are alleging widespread electoral fraud. Nearly 30,000 police and army officers were deployed to oversee polling. Azadeh Shahahani, uh, president of the National Lawyers Guild, was one of about 800 international observers monitoring the vote. Despite all of the documentation that has happened with the human rights violations that are happening here um, on a daily basis and, um, you know, leftists getting murdered, um, that the U.S. military, the U.S. government continues to support the military here. I mean, on the way here from Atlanta, we saw um, scores of um, military people from Honduras who had just got training, received training at the School of Americas in Fort Benning, and they were just coming back to Honduras. And, you know, there is impunity for murder, for, you know, all kinds of human rights violations. And um, it is truly unfortunate that the Leahy law is not being implemented in the U.S. Adrian Pine is assistant professor of anthropology at American University, currently in Honduras, where she's conducting research on a Fulbright scholarship. She's author of Working Hard, Drinking Hard on Violence and Survival in Honduras. And we're joined by Edwin Espinal, a community organizer and resistance movement activist in Honduras. He's been subjected to repeated harassment and torture at the hands of police. Espinal's partner, Wendy Diaz, was killed, uh, of <clears throat> died as a result of tear gas inhalation out outside the Brazilian embassy and the violent ouster of a resistance member following the return of uh, President Zelaya to Honduras in 2009. Um, Adrian Pine, let's begin with you. The results are not fully in yet. Uh, at around 53, 54 percent of the count, um, what the, uh, the what Honduras is saying, the authorities are saying, is that um, that the right-wing candidate um, Hernandez has beaten um, uh, Shimara Castro, your response? Well, there's uh, yes, that's the official story that we're hearing from the Supreme Electoral Tribunal, Amy. But um, but it contrasts with the numbers that are coming out of the polling places themselves, which show an overwhelming lead for um, for the candidate Xiomara Castro. So there's a real concern. Uh, on the streets, there's real concern uh, over the social networks, and we're expecting that there will probably uh, that these results have not been accepted by the um, by the Libre Party, and, uh, and we're expecting people will probably be going out on the streets to protest them today. And if you, um, Edwin Espinal, could talk about the significance of this election, why it matters so much to you, and, and what happened to your partner. Um, hi, good morning. Um, um, yeah, my partner was uh, killed by the tear gas on September 23rd after uh, President Nozelaya come back to the country to the uh, Brazilian embassy. She was exposed to um, tear gas uh, for a long period of time, and in a um, couple of Days after we were evicted from the Brazilian embassy, she passed away in a public hospital because um, because of the uh, excess of uh, tear gas in his uh, her uh, respiratory system, and um, 
Yeah, and uh, the, the the thing is that the uh, the doctors at the hospital they were trying to cover her the reason she she died, and then she told me that she died by the uh, the flu um, disease um, and not for um, tear gas. They were trying to hide the real the uh, reason that she passed away, and. Uh, this electoral process is very important to me and my family because uh, we, the social movements and uh, the community, community uh, organizers, we've been targeted by the uh, militaries and police and the government, but just by the fact of the organizing people in our communities to, um, you know, to to improve our communities and educate people in our communities about the uh, the um, political um, situation in our country. Mm. We're talking to Edwin Espinal, community organizer, and Adrian Pine of American University, who lives in Honduras. We're speaking to them in Tegucigalpa this day after the election. I want to turn to a leading Honduran human rights activist, Bertha Caceres, talking about the significance of Xiomara Castro's new Libre Party. Bertha is a leader of the Civic Council of Popular and Indigenous Organizations of Honduras. Uh, she has been in hiding for the past two months. No, claro que no. No, claro que no. La población hoy. The population today, those who've been in resistance who are from the Libre Party, are challenging the repressive apparatus, with the absence of the construction of real power from the communities. But now, these people are voting enthusiastically for the Libre Party, that we hope will be distinct from the other political parties. This scenario is playing out in all the regions of Honduras, in Zacata Grande, Garifuna communities, campesino sectors, women, feminists, artists, journalists, and indigenous communities. We all know how these people have been hard hit, especially the journalists, LGBTQ community, and indigenous communities. This is all part of what they've done to create a climate of fear. Here, there's a policy of the state to instill terror and political persecution. This is to punish the Honduran people so that people don't opt for the other way and look for changes to the political economic situation and the militarization. That's Honduran human rights activist Bertha Caceres, who actually has been in hiding for the last two months, leader of the Civic Council of Popular um, and Indigenous Organizations of Honduras. Adrian, would you put this election in context? I mean, democracy now, in 2009, extensively covered the ouster, the coup against President Zelaya. <clears throat> then he returned to the country, and we were on that plane when he flew from Nicaragua uh, to Honduras, but could not run again. His wife, as we <clears throat> were on that plane, interviewed um, Xiomara Castro. Uh, she, right back then, when they were returning, was already planning to run for president. Talk about the significance of this election in that trajectory. Uh, since 2009, and then who the opponent she is running against, Mr. Hernandez, is, and the significance of his possible election. Sure. Um, the, this election, for most, I think most Hondurans, is, represents the possible overturning of the coup, finally, because the elections that took place in 2009 were fraudulent, they were militarized, they were not re recognized for two years, in fact, by most of the international community. And they were boycotted by everyone who had opposed the coup, both candidates and voters. And um, and there's been, as Berta Cáceres mentioned, intense repression against all sorts of activists, including Edwin, um, in that time. And that stems from the impunity that um, that comes out of the coup. So people in Xiomara Castro have seen a leader, um, a, a leader who's not just the wife of Manuel Salaya, but uh, really has come into her own as a leader. And there has been, it's, it's impossible to overstate the amount of hope and, and excitement and mobilization that people have been engaging in uh, leading up to these elections. And yesterday, the, um, the feeling on the ground was one of exuberance. You could uh, see that the turnout was, it was higher than, um, than ever before in Honduran elections, and people were turning out for the Libre Party. Um, the other candidate, Juan Orlando Hernandez, who's with the National Party, which which is the same party that um, the current president is from, Porfirio Lobo Sosa, uh, his main platform 
has been one of militarization. He has promised to have a soldier on every corner in order to combat the, the crime situation, which is quite dire in Honduras. But it has reached the levels of uh, the extreme levels where Honduras is now the most dangerous country in the world only since the coup itself. And that's a direct result of the impunity that, that comes from the coup. So very radically different models of governance uh, pr being proposed by the two major candidates. Um, um, one of which has to do with greater democratization and the other which has to do with greater militarization. Um, <clears throat> in 2011, after almost two years in exile, uh, when former President Zelaya and his family were greeted by tens of thousands of supporters as they flew in from Nicaragua to Tegucigalpa, um, I had a chance to ask uh, the former First Lady, now the presidential candidate, uh, Xiomara Castro, about her likely candidacy back then. President Zelaya cannot run for president again, is that right? No. But Mrs. Zelaya, Mrs. Castro de Zelaya, Castro de Zelaya, is that right? Ella sí podría tener chance de lanzarse como candidata. No me impide, la ley no me lo impide. The law does not prevent me from doing that. La ley no me lo impide, o sea, yo no tengo ningún impedimento para poder participar en el proceso. I do not have any obstacle uh, in order to participate in the process. It is an electoral process. Pero en este momento. But at this moment. I mean, you could. Quiere decir que usted podría lanzarse si usted no, desearía. Estoy quisiera. De que, no, what de I'm que saying is no that I do not have any obstacles. Que la ley no me lo the law does not stop me from doing it. So you could run for president Entonces, if you chose. Yes. O sea, si es, es, yes. Se, la ley no me lo the law does not claro. stop no me. Lo that is very clear. The law does not la stop it. Si the law a, a does a stop Mel from doing that because the process. De, de la, uh, de la uh, of the que same law establishes that the only no one president can be president for four years. You're saying that uh, President Zelaya did not serve out his full term. Is there any kind Entonces, of allowance that is made for that? Same thing happened to President Aristide in Haiti. Entonces, ella no, muy bien. La es que eso no, no se ha there is no established eh, a procedure to claro make that happen. Que... To see that journey back when the Zelayas returned, uh, Manuel Zelaya and uh, Shimara Castro de Zelaya returned to um, Honduras. You can go to our website at democracynow.org. I wanted to turn, though, now to international observer Baltasar Garzón, the Spanish judge, who was in Honduras, saying how important it is to remember the chaos surrounding Zelaya's ouster. Precisely because of what happened four years ago, this process is so important to assure that democracy is consolidated in Honduras and, above all, the credibility of a political representation. Adrian Pine, your response. That's the famous Spanish judge who held uh, Pinochet, the former Chilean dictator, to account, uh, calling for his arrest in, when he was in Britain. Uh, the significance of uh, what he has just said, Adrian Pine. Um, uh, well, the international election observers here have played a crucial role and, uh, and uh, in, in ensuring that, uh, that there is an eye on Honduras. I wouldn't say ensuring the legitimacy of the process, because I believe that the process is, right now, is, uh, there's, there's fraud that is in the works. But um, international observers, in fact, have been subject to harassment and intimidation by uh, police here in Honduras uh, in, the, in the two days leading up to the elections, that mass police entered the hotel of several international observers and uh, demanded to see all their documents and have been basically intimidating them. These are migration police. And, uh, and so I think that their presence is really important because it's showing um, the world, how the Honduran security forces treat Hondurans on a daily basis, and the fact that you know this, there have not been free and fair conditions for this election, and uh, and it's really important that they're here uh, to document that. Edwin Espinel, what is at stake today in this election, and what will it mean to you um, if uh, Hernandez is declared the winner or Castro? Uh, it will be. Um complete disaster for me, my family, and our Honduran family, because we already being on this, um, on this system for four years, and um, the violence, the poverty, the misery, 
and um, has just increased um, in this country. And uh, we cannot, uh, you know, just wait until another four years being um, in this country with, you know, with uh, as a Juan Orlando as a president. We are, me and my family and Honduras people in general, we are so scared uh, that this situation will uh, just get worse in this country. And, um, well, I hope that the international community keep their eyes on, on this country and um, help us to, to put pressure in the government and uh, at least to be, to be transparent and, uh, with Honduran people because uh, we, had, we, we witnessed yesterday that uh, the, the electoral process was not transparent at all. And uh, we are really sad because uh, because there um, we had hope on uh, the candidates of uh, Xiomara Castro that she will bring um, big changes for our country and uh, the um, the reality in our society to make a make a big changes that. Uh, that could change our uh, the way we live our lives. We don't want to live in in, this, uh, in our neighborhoods with violence, with uh, kids on the street begging for food, or stealing from people. We don't we don't want to live in a system anymore. We want changes, and I hope the international community keep their eyes and pressure this government, at least so they can respect Honduran people, will. And um, there was um, yesterday an electoral process was, uh, was uh, Honduran people show to the international community what was their um, choice. And we choose to change the, um, the government, but they're, they're using the fraud to stay in power. I hope the um, international community and we as Hondurans take actions to, I, to take to the uh, actual government. And when I power. wanted to go to uh, ousted President Manuel Zelaya, the husband of the current uh, presidential candidate, uh, Xiomara Castro, this is former President uh, Zelaya talking about these election results. The results handed down by the Electoral Court are not a faithful reflection of what has happened in the polls. The facts show that Xiomara won with a 3.5 percent margin, and yet, when the Court speaks, it has placed us at seven points below. So results handed down by the Court are totally contradictory to what took place. And there is an important point I want to underscore. Twenty percent of the registries of votes that they collected have been hidden from the vote count under the pretext that they are inconsistent. If an election takes place, with more than 3 percent margin of error, and here the margin is 20 percent, the election would be nullified from whatever point of view in any country, anywhere in the world. That was former Honduran President Manuel Zelaya speaking to Andres Contreras. Uh, for Democracy Now!, Adrian Pine, the significance of this, and also the fact that you had a whole range of uh, international observers. Among them was the former um, head of the Republican National Party in California. And I wanted to turn to that clip as well. Um, the former Republican um, uh, head of the uh, uh, of the California Republican Party, Ron Naring. Strong, de strong democratic governments in Central America are very, very important. This is a critical election for Honduras. Honduras faces very, very significant challenges. Uh, there are issues in the United States which transcend borders that the United States and uh, Central America impact one another in areas including the, not only the economy but human trafficking, drug trafficking, uh, violence, corruption, other uh, unintended uh, consequences of the drug trade and so on. So this is a very, very important election for Honduras and we want to make sure that whoever wins tonight, regardless of who that person is, uh, uh, is the winner of a legitimately held election. That's Ron Naring, former head of the California Republican Party, one of some 800 international observers monitoring the Honduran elections. Adrian Pine, if you could respond both to Ron Naring as well as uh, a former president, the ousted president, Zelaya. 
Um, well, I would certainly agree with Ron Nering that what we all hope is that the will of the Honduran people is respected in this election. And, uh, and in terms of what Mel Celaya said, uh, I, I share his concern about the accuracy of the Supreme Electoral Tribunal's vote count. And I think a couple important points are to be made here. That first of all, the Supreme Electoral Tribunal um, was illegally appointed in the first place by Micheletti, the, who was the dictator following the coup, just prior to the coup in that they were elected officials and they're not by the Honduran constitution allowed to be appointed to the Supreme Electoral Tribunal. So they were appointed to carry out the coup. They then were the main body that legitimated and carried out fraud in the 2009 elections. And they have now been very clearly uh, acting on the side of the National Party and also of the religious leaders of the country who were the strongest backers of the coup. So this is a very biased institution. Um, another point that I think is frightening is that the U.S. ambassador to Honduras last night uh, made a call to respect the numbers that were coming out from the Supreme Electoral Tribunal, and they're not even final numbers yet, but basically put her hat in on their side. And we're really worried about um, the U.S. making declarations this early when there still aren't numbers that, um, that anybody is agreeing on or, or, or trusts from uh, any side yet. I mean, there, there isn't a final count. And, uh, and so the process uh, has not been transparent. There were irregularities throughout. There were murders, as have been mentioned earlier, intimidation of voters, vote buying. But I think the most fraud has happened by the Supreme Electoral Tribunal, which is both um, it carried out and itself is a product of the 2009 coup. We want to thank you both for being with us, Adrian Pine of American University, living in Honduras currently. Uh, they are conducting research on a Fulbright scholarship uh, among her books, Working Hard, Drinking Hard, and Edwin Espinal, a community activist uh, who is in Honduras right now, of course, lives there, has been subjected to repeated announcement, and his partner, Wendy Diaz, was died as a result of tear gas inhalation um, uh, during the time of the return of President Zelaya to the country. Um, when so many came out to greet him. Special thanks to Andalusia Noll and Andres Contreras. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.